from evolution to revolution. Well, that's what Harley is saying about the new Sportster S, which was released via another video release on July 13th, 2021. And yes, like their other recent motorcycle releases, the video was highly produced and well, it lacked a lot of critical information. So I'm here to break it down for you and tell you what you need to know about the all new Harley Davidson Sportster S so you can decide if it's the right bike for you and if this is the right direction for Harley Davidson. All right, hang on tight. I'm coming at you with a lot of information. Welcome back, Bikeaholics. Ryan Erlacher here, LawAbidingBiker.com. I always thank you, that's right, you, for checking back in. Now, a quick reminder that this is an independent channel. Nope, I don't work for Hardy and I don't own a dealership. So you can be certain that the information you get on this channel is unbiased. And just a quick recap of the actual video release. So it starts at the Tolchin Lodge. I think I said that right. Anyways, that's a high flute and exclusive private members only club in Scotland. At the lodge are Jochen Zeitz, president and CEO of Hardy Davidson and Bill Davidson, who is the VP of Hardy Davidson Museum. They also end up at the Davidson Family Cottage in Netherton, Scotland. And if you're not familiar, the Davidson family roots are in Scotland as they originally migrated to Wisconsin from there and started Hardy Davidson. So a majority of the glory shots in the video were filmed in Scotland. And so in the video, they go on to give a history of the Harley Sportster, which first came to market in 1957. Now, the Sportster had a new motor with overhead valves and it was small, light, and powerful back then. Additionally, it was used on-road, off-road, drag racing, flat track, and the motor was used for some land speed records. And so I tell you all of this because it seems consistent with other recent Harley releases via video that company marketing goals are really focused on educating customers on the rich history of Harley Davidson in hopes of making a deeper, more personal connection. Hey, I was just glad we didn't have to see or hear from Aquaman in this video, probably because he'd look like a monkey humping a football on this Sportster S. Okay, enough about the overly produced Harley video. Let's dive into the Sportster S and what you want to know. And yeah, we definitely got to start with the powerhouse of an engine they put in the new Sportster S. Now, this is the same Revolution Max 1250 engine that they put in the Pan America, Hardy's first adventure bike, but it's been detuned or maybe retuned but we'll get into that in a moment. Oh, and speaking of the Pan America, make sure you subscribe to this channel before leaving because Harley is flying me down to Sturgis for a couple days to test ride and review the Pan America and taking me on an awesome guided tour on and off road. Of course, I'll be releasing a full video on that trip and my review in the near future, along with a ton of other awesome videos. We're coming at you hard here in 2021, so watch out. So, like the Pan America, this Revolution Max is a liquid and oil-cooled engine, but they put a T designator on the end of the 1250, so this is the 1250T version. The Revolution Max engine is a 60-degree V-twin, has dual overhead camshafts, four valves per cylinder, variable valve timing, a 12 to 1 compression ratio, and peak RPM of 9,500. This engine uses a unitized powertrain, sharing its housing with a six-speed gearbox. And it's worth noting that like the Pan America, this Revolution Max engine is an integrated member of the frame. It's actually the first frame component on which all of the vehicle is assembled. And that definitely helps keep weight down. And here is where the new Sportster S version of the Revolution Max engine differs from the engine in the Pan America. You see, the Pan America version produces 150 horsepower, which differs from the 121 horsepower produced by the new Sportster S. Both produce 95 foot-pounds of torque. And that may have some of you disappointed that they retuned the same engine and gave it less horsepower. 
but it makes sense to me as you want a different power delivery for a single purpose street bike in comparison to the needs of an adventure style bike like the Pan America. To me, it really means that Harley didn't just want to slap the same exact Pan America motor into the Sportster, which would have been the easy road. Instead, they took care to make sure that this engine was tuned to the specific needs of a street style bike such as the new Sportster S. At the end of the day, this is going to be a fast and powerful little bike, weighing in at 500 pounds and having a lean angle of 34 degrees on both sides. It has a 3.1 gallon fuel tank and is said to get around 49 miles per gallon in ideal conditions. It's definitely an around town and short distance bike and you definitely won't be doing any serious long distance touring on this bike, unless you're 20 years old maybe. I really hope I can get my hands on one of these and do a ride and review. So all of this begs the question, does Hardy already have a tuner or package for the Sportster S to bump up that horsepower? with an ECM upload, maybe an air intake and different pipes on top of it. They did say they already have many add-on parts and accessories for the Sportster S, and I'm certain many other companies will start making aftermarket parts for this bike if it sells well. And my gut tells me that Harley will definitely have a tune upgrade package and they'll certainly sell it to you so you can get more out of that Revolution Max 1250T engine. For now, I'm gonna call it the Screamin' Eagle Protune for Sportster S. Pretty catchy, huh? And I know you're listening, Harley. Hey, you can reach out to me for the rights to that name when you're ready. And I actually wanna hear if you all think this sort of tune will be available right away, what you think about the Sportster S in general, and if you think this is the right direction for Harley. Do you think the new model is the final way to get rid of the older Sportster models with the air-cooled Evolution engines? After all, they said in the video that they are going from Evolution to Revolution, which seems to indicate to me that they are going to phase that motor out. Leave your comments below. I look forward to reading them. With that said, let's dive into some more specs and what this new bike offers. And sticking with the history of Sportster theme, designers tried to bring some of the designs of past Sportster models and stitch it into the new model, such as the tail section, which resembles that of the XR750, and the fat 16-inch front wheel like that of the 48, just to name a few. And yes, this actual Sportster model comes stock with cruise control, adjustable clutch and brake lever, alarm, all LED lighting, tire pressure management system, and cornering riding safety enhancements, including traction control and ABS. And speaking of ABS, this bike is coming with Brembo radial mounted monoblock four piston caliper on the front and floating single piston caliper on the rear and should give this bike plenty of stopping power. As far as suspension goes, the Sports Dress is coming with Showa 43 millimeter inverted forks with compression, rebound and spring preload adjustability on the front and for the rear, a linkage mounted piggyback monoshock with compression, rebound, and hydraulic spring preload adjustability. This bike has a fat 160 millimeter front tire on a 17 inch wheel, while the rear tire is 180 millimeters wide on a 16 inch wheel. Both wheels are aluminum cast and satin black, and both wheels are fitted with the Dunlop Harley Davidson series tires. The Sportster S has two into one into two exhaust, and the exhaust chamber is right at the rider's right thigh. I do see heat shields over the chamber and only time will tell how hot this will get for the rider. Interestingly, they equip the sports dress with forward controls and I'd say many may prefer mid controls for a more aggressive stance on a smaller bike like this, which is definitely designed for leaning and faster cornering. But don't worry, they already made a mid control conversion kit that can be installed on the bike if you like. All right, and real quick and then we'll get right back into your video. As you can imagine, a ton of man hours, expenses, and effort go into keeping this channel going strong. Well, there is a way you can support us by becoming a patron member. I will link to it in the description below for you. By signing up, there are benefits such as t-shirts and stickers, access to the private Facebook group, which is a troll-free zone. It is awesome. It's nothing but bikers helping bikers. You get access to live video broadcasts and chat podcasts early, premium videos, and of course, access to those ride meetups and events. We'd love to have you sign up and become part of the community. Additionally, this bike comes with three ride modes, which are rain, road, and sport. There are also several customizable slots. Now, each of these modes affects engine map, 
throttle response, engine braking, and the six axis IMU, which detects lean angle and feeds data for the cornering ABS, traction control, and drag slip torque control. All of this technology allows you to really dial in the ride and feel of this bike. And you can access all these ride modes in the new infotainment system in the form of a round four inch color TFT display near the handlebars. This small system is Bluetooth enabled and you can pair it with your smartphone, allowing you to access phone calls, music, and you can get turn by turn directions using the Harley Davidson app. The TFT also displays a speedometer, tack, battery voltage, TPMS, engine temp, odometer, and an array of other information. And finally, the bike is coming standard in vivid black and at an additional cost, you can upgrade paint to stonewash white pearl or midnight crimson, which is my personal favorite. So the most important thing is the price and how this Sportster S in a very basic comparison stacks up to a few competitors. So the Sportster S is coming in at a base price of 15,000. Now this is more expensive than we are used to seeing in the Sportster lineup. As an example, the Iron 1200 is coming in at around 10,000, but these two bikes are really not even close in specs. So take that with a grain of salt. Now the Indian Scout Bobber comes in at 11,000 while the Triumph Bobber comes in at around 13,000. Again, this is a loose comparison, but, and a huge but, the Sportster S may have the highest price tag, but the competitors aren't even in the ballpark in regards to the horsepower, components, performance, and the technology that you get in the Harley Davidson Sportster S and its all new Revolution Max 1250T engine. Harley has really smashed the competition in this category of motorcycle, and it will be very interesting to see if Indian and Triumph respond and step up their game because of it. I love competition in the marketplace as it's good for the entire motorcycle industry. And real quick, if you like this video and information, you really need to listen to and subscribe to the Law Abiding Biker Podcast as we talk about things like this in a lot more depth and we have a lot of fun doing it. You can listen on any major podcast platform and I'll leave a link to our free podcast app in the description below. Now, I have both praised Harley and have not been afraid to be very critical of them over the years on this channel when it's deserved. In regards to the Sportster S, I think Harley knocked it out of the park on this one. And I think they did the same with the recent release of the Pan America Adventure Bike. I think they really have taken the industry by surprise. Now, it seems the leadership of CEO Jochen Zeitz is putting Harley on a path to success and has gotten them out of a rut they seem to have been in during the past years. I don't know for certain and only time will tell. And I'm also very excited as of recent that Harley Marketing seems to have been empowered to actually connect with their core and future customers where they're actually hanging out these days, which is on channels like this. You see, most customers, yeah, you out there, you don't care about big magazines, their websites, Hollywood celebrities or actors. You know, I think those days are gone. Bikers want to get information from other actual bikers who ride every day in the real world and are actually living the lifestyle. I'm also very excited about the new technology and performance Harley is bringing to the table. And I can only hope that it bleeds over to other bikes, especially in the touring lineup. I do hope that they keep building awesome new progressive bikes like the Sportster S, but I also hope that they keep some of the older lineup as many customers may just like those better and maybe more traditional riders. I do think that there's a fine balance there. But to be honest, my gut tells me that the traditional Sportster is all but dead in the very near future. Just my opinion, no inside info on that. Anyways, let me and the entire community know your opinions and thoughts in the comments below. All right, your journey's not done on the channel. I am popping a couple cards on the screen here for you. Hopefully something useful or entertaining. Heck, maybe both. At any rate, when you're done watching videos on the channel, make sure you get out there and ride every chance you get, Bikeaholics. It's good for your soul.